We still have Mark Prosteris with you here, with us here from Car uh, Keller Williams out of Carmel Valley, and then we also have Melissa Tucci with Century Twenty One All, All Service. Service. I Perfect. nailed it. Yes, welcome. Good job. Thank you. Thanks for having so, me. So, so I want to speak to both of you here, uh, Mark. With cycles, you know, cycles of real estate. All this stuff happening. It's it's easy to overreact. It's easy to watch the twenty four seven news cycle and feel like the world's coming to an end. Uh, you've been through these cycles, so you're a little bit more callous to some of these things, a little bit numb to some of the media hype. And then, uh, Melissa, I think what you can really speak to is, is some of the, the small cycles we're seeing of interest rates going up and down and how people are reacting. So w w what do you think when you see all this, this craziness? It's kind of water off the back of a duck. Heck, when I started in the industry, we were coming out of 16 17% interest rates. And you know what? People were still buying. And people who bought houses in those days, if they've hung on to them, they've done exceptionally now, well. Now, you're over, what, 200 agents? Yeah, 220 okay, so, some So Mark agents. is uh, over 200 agents. Uh, and when you hear them complain, when interest rates are like four something percent, and you start in the business when it was 16, 17 percent, do you smack them? Uh, do you I'd choke like, them? I'd like to. I just kind what of do give do, them what that, do you do to them? I give them that fatherly, oh, really, you know? Because it's just the market of the moment, right? We've yeah. talked about that in the past. And you know what? We're all going to survive. We're all going to, the market's going to do what it's going to do. We're going to have increases. We're going to have drops. Interest rates are going to go up. Interest rates are going to come down. But the real question is, is does it serve you and your family's goals now? Yep. How about these, these little short-term spikes and in drops in interest rates? Uh, last time you were on, or maybe two times ago, was inventory is low, mortgage rates have gone up. Right, and now inventory's and, and you come on, now gone inventory's up. up, and mm -hmm. mortgage rates have gone down. If you go to Yahoo Finance, what was supposed to be a reliable source, mm -hmm. they're gonna tell you the exact opposite of what's really happening. They're saying that mortgage rates have gone up. They actually have gone down because Ben Bernanke decided to continue to, uh, to inject stimulus, mm -hmm. quantitative easing three. So I, I really want to know like the pulse of the market and what, how do people react to this stuff? I mean, are they in tune with it? How do you, how do you keep people informed? You, th well, that's just it. You have to keep them informed because it's do constantly they changing. They do listen. Yeah. I think via email and, and when you're showing properties or talking with them or talking with your sellers or buyers, it's basically, you know, hey, this property sold last week for this price or, you know, things are changing that quickly. It's sometimes just less than even a week and it really dictates the market for that area. So you really have to be on you, top of you it. You were on the radio show this week. I was. And you mm -hmm. talked about uh, one of the listings that you're working on. I think you closed like three deals in one day. Right, yes. Congratulations. <laughs> That's what we go to business yeah. to do. You rock. You Thanks. absolutely rock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not going to say it. You know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. She's okay. a good agent. I get in trouble when I say she's the agent I would use if I was buying yeah. a house. So I'm not going to say that. You can say it. It's I all right. I can't say she's the agent I would use if I was <laughs> buying a house. Uh, but you mentioned on the radio show that you actually had a listing that you were working on for someone here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. and they're going to list the property and then one of their neighbors actually sold one in it, uh, about a week and a half after we went on the neighbor listed there's about 45,000 less and my clients when you went on to the market correct okay correct so we were on the market because the last comparable sold at X amount and then we went on thinking we were good you know very priced very fairly and then a new competitive listing went Comes on in lower 45,000 lower and of course they got offers right away and now that's going to hurt our comparable and, and drag it down. But, mm. you know, next week, another one could come up and drag it up. That, see, that's, yeah. so that's kind of what's been so happening. That's so weird about the whole thing mm -hmm. is that that guy put his home on the market hearing that properties are getting offers above listing price, that people are making a lot of offers. Mm -hmm. Let's put it out there. Let's swing for the fences. And then yeah. we got a property coming in below. Right. So, I mean, I would be p stuck in paralysis by analysis. I, You know, who wants to lower their their price because of that, but in the same breath, if that's what the, the comps are, right. are showing. So how do you guys address the comps? I mean, where do you guys try and pull comps from our listing? Let's start with you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, Melissa, and I'm curious what your take is on this as mm -hmm. well. You know, if you think about it, between January and July, you couldn't keep any inventory there. Things were on fire, flying mm -hmm. off the shelf. And it's like, came the end of July, August, it's like a screeching halt. So I, I think you really have to kind of watch what the trend has been, but also just be sensitive to watching the things that are currently active on the market. How mm -hmm. quickly are they being absorbed? Are they being absorbed? How's that price relative to the most recent sale in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. be interesting. Maybe the one that was less got multiple offers. Who knows? It, Maybe it'll close higher than yours. And actually, it did get multiple offers, yeah. but they listed it artificially lower in order to do that. So See, it's, and then it, now I'll talk about throwing a monkey wrench in all of it. So they're intentionally listing it low to get offers above and beyond. Now, that's what a lot of the banks were doing back mm -hmm. through all the foreclosures. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that still a strategy? 
Does that make sense? Well, it sometimes is for some people, but there's a lot of sellers that are a little fearful of doing that just because they don't want to leave money on the table. And well, they don't also, have to accept an offer though, right? They don't, but I think it's pride of your home too. Like you want to really try to list it you know, for what you think for market value is. But every seller is different. Sometimes that's where the range pricing right. comes in really you know, handy Explain as well. Explain the range pricing. I think people probably have a lot of questions with that. Now, if, if you don't know what I'm referring to, imagine um, you know, the last time you bought a home or, or someone sent you an NMLS, not NMLS, I'm thinking of the mortgage <laughs> game, MLS listing, and you see like a price range of mm -hmm. 400 to 440. People always ask the question, they go to craigsewing.com asking this question, why? Why yeah. not just be 400 or why right. not just be 440? Right. It's a strictly a marketing tactic. It's to get more people in the door. So say you're only qualified for 415 and the seller really might consider that, you'll never see that listing if you're just listed at 440 because there's 90 percent of people use search engines on on mm -hmm. the internet and everyone does their own searches and that's really the i always tell that to people if buyer wants the low price seller wants the high price it's a marketing tactic to get you in the door and depending on how many interested parties that's what really creates what price they'll yeah. sell it at and, I had a, and pricing ahead. it right in that regard is important too if mm -hmm. someone does take that route right if mm -hmm. that low number is the fair market price and the high number is some real artificially high price mm -hmm. the odds of them getting that it, it doesn't help them right do you have a lot of sellers out there right now or quasi sellers pretend sellers that see that the housing market's been so hot and they come to you and say well my number is here if I could get this I'd sell and just throw something huge out there and throw some mud at the wall, see what sticks. Does that happen? Sometimes, and I think as we had talked about at that summit, is there's on Zillow, it's the make me move um, link that basically someone wants a certain price point, and then if they could get it, then they're gonna try to list their home at that price, but you don't see too many people. When you listed that home you were talking about earlier with mm -hmm. the, the comp, mm -hmm. uh, with the $40,000 lower comp, how many offers did you get on that property? What was the price? It was listed at 375. Okay, so it's 375. How mm -hmm. many offers did you get when you put it on the market? I only got one, and it was actually a very fair offer. She did not take it, and then she wished she did because it was higher than what now we're probably going to have to lower it to. I have a friend uh, that, that yeah. bought a house, <laughs> and he put about 200 grand into it. Got uh, built a lot of kind of sweat equity there. Went to sell it, uh, sold it, cash buyer, 600 something thousand. As soon as this thing went into escrow, he got an offer of fifty thousand dollars higher. Do you guys see that happen a lot? Uh, I haven't and seen what do you too yeah, much of that of late. As a matter really? of fact, it's kind of been the opposite. Exactly mm -hmm. what Melissa was saying. Had a listing, it was uh, less than three hundred, and I kept reminding the seller, "Your first offer is typically your best," yeah, and they I didn't take it. Too. Really? And then they is were that, begging why, to take why it. That, why is that though? Because we had comps from when the market was really on fire, January through July, that were as much as fifteen thousand over the number that it came in at. Within two weeks, he was like, can you go back and please see mm -hmm. if they'll come back and And then they're usually offer. not there. Yeah, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. And I was just gonna, they're usually why the first offer is the best is because you have people looking daily that are wanting a place and then as soon as your property comes on the market, bam, they want hmm. to put an offer on it and usually they'll come in very, pretty competitively. Hmm. And it's not always, but that's what I find.